Hi and welcome to another episode of Rob's Triathlon Tips for Beginners. Um, one of my recent videos where I talked about my off-season training plan mentioned that I was interested in getting a continuous glucose monitor and I have done that and so this is a video regarding that, how you put one in, whether it's painful or not, why you might want to get one yourself and I'll include a tour of the app and share my screen so you can see some of my own data and some of the really incredible things I've learned about how my body is functioning at my age which is 42 <laughs> so I think this should be a really interesting video and I hope you find it interesting too so the continuous glucose monitor or CGM that I purchased is from a company called NutriSense there are some other products out there. This was the easiest one for me to get a hold of that a lot of other people have made videos about. There's a company called Levels, and right now it seems like it's not widely available, except for high profile athletes and influencers and doctors to tinker with. You can put your name on a sort of a waiting list, basically, but they never got back to me, so I ordered this product. <laughs> uh, this is the size of the package that comes in the mail. It comes with two sensors. So I'll just open it up. Uh, it's got this handy little simple guide for how to um, unpackage things and what's included in the package. And, and it's got a link to, uh, to a website where you can find a tutorial video on how to install the sensor in your arm. So here's an example of one of the sensor packages. So you get a sticker that goes over the sensor to hold it in place and keep it from getting ripped off by accident. Like if you're snagging on something or you're too aggressive taking off your sweater or your shirt, for example. Uh, and then you get this sort of, what do you call that? An electrostatic protection bag. And, uh, Inside that, there are three things. You get a wipe to clean the back of your arm where you're going to install the sensor. You get this thing that looks like, you know, yogurt or pudding. <laughs> but this is the actual sensor. And then you get this cool looking thing, which is the applicator. And this applicator has a tiny little needle in it the sensor is just like a little filament that goes under your skin and uh i'll film another short video after this of me installing a sensor it takes about a minute and a half or something once you know what you're doing you pick a sort of fatty part of your arm in your tricep pretty much and um yeah, it's a quick process to apply the sensor with this device. And I would say it's a mild pain for like 30 seconds or something. I think I felt it the last time I installed the sensor. And then after that, unless you're being reckless, uh, you pretty much don't feel it. It doesn't bother you when you're working out. All right, so... I just woke up and my sensor needs to be replaced, so uh, it's in my left arm right now. It's got this sticker on it. If one thing that wasn't working right was the sticker. Maybe it's because it's on my arm with a bunch of hair. <laughs> so I had to put some extra stuff. Some uh, duct tape <laughs> on one side to keep the sticker on. To, it's supposed to protect the sensor from getting ripped out by accident. So let's see how this comes out. Ooh, lots of hair getting stuck. I bet it hurts more to get the hair off <laughs> than the sensor out.
<laughs> Ooh. There we go. Sensor off. Uh, where's the camera? There it is. Just a tiny little sort of flexible kind of filament. And lesson learned for the second sensor, shave the back of your arm where you're going to put the sensor. <laughs> Okay, so I uh, shaped this area where I'm going to put the sensor on the back of my right arm. Lesson learned from hair getting ripped out, taking the other sensor out. Uh, you open your little pudding pop. It's got the new sensor in it. And you need to swab the back of your arm. Now I'm getting a good sting because <laughs> I shaved my arm. And then you unscrew the applicator and you basically just you line up the tabs on this bad boy and you kind of push down. Let me see if I can. And then you can see in there you've got the device. And then you're going to pick a fatty part of your arm and just push it in. And there it is. Doesn't hurt at all. Maybe a mild pain for. 10 seconds or something and then you take one of these stickers and you peel off the back and put it on the sensor to protect it all right so this is a recording of my screen on my iphone of the nutrisense app so i'll flip through the days that i've filled in so far and show you some of the features so this is the first day that I used the sensor. I activated it the evening of December 22nd. Uh, so up at the top, you've got the, the three bars. Some people call that the hamburger. Click up there, you can see the different options in that menu. The dashboard is just the graph and what you've eaten that day. Uh, you can build habits in. I've, I haven't done that. You can also tap ingredients and click at, add in the top right corner and put things in manually if you can't find them in their database. So that's pretty cool. I haven't had the need to do that, but you can do that. There's an education space where you can learn all about it and um, understanding blood glucose. And... Um, there's a messaging center, so that's where you interact with the dietitian assigned to your case to give you suggestions. So in my case, it's someone named Heather, and there's been a whole bunch of conversation there, talking about the approach to testing out my diet with the sensor. That's been really great. Uh, and then there's information on your subscription. The cost. Uh, let me go back here. Your profile, basic app settings, um, what your sensor is. This is where you go to activate a new one, and you do have the opportunity to like clear all your data. I don't know why you would do that. Maybe it was some malfunctioning. You can export data here. All that that does is email you. Uh, a CSV file you can open in Microsoft Excel or I think Google Sheets too and when you open it it seems kind of useless it doesn't have everything in it all it is is you know on this day at this time your blood sugar reading was this it doesn't tell you anything about what you ate at different times it seems like it's a very early feature and it's not really great for anything right now uh, you do have the ability to integrate 
these things. Um, I haven't really done that. I don't know what those are. So I'll go back to my dashboard and start flipping through things. Um, so this is the chart for the day and every little dot means something like you can track uh, when you went to sleep and when you woke up and when you exercised. And each dot can be like something you had to drink or something you had to eat. And it's all super easy. So if I was to want to add a reading for the for a particular time of the day, you would just hit the scan button and you can see what it shows you. It's just hold it up to the sensor and I can just hit cancel and it'll update since the last time you took a reading all of the data that's in the sensor and it holds about eight hours of data so you might miss a little bit of data if you slept for like 10 hours or something uh, you can see here here's you have the opportunity to take a photo of what you eat and then it actually has some ai built into it to try and guess what's in the photo like you know blackberries and blueberries it may suggest that sometimes it's a little off <laughs> it's entertaining actually to see what it guesses you're eating um, and yeah you can see the kind of information it, it gives you uh, what happened when you ate that pre post and it gives you nutritional information and you can expand that and look at all kinds of information that's in the database for what you ate so that's quite interesting to dive into you can see how many carbs you had protein fat how many calories it was for the blueberries and blackberries that you ate uh, you can put in all kinds of drinks like black coffee tea you can a can of coke almond milk you know here i had some peanut butter on toast and you can see what response you have to eating different things. Uh, I took a picture of my lunch just for the fun of it. And then I went in and manually added the things that I ate. So cheese, lentil soup, uh, a couple mini bell peppers, cucumber, some crackers. <laughs> so if you were to manually enter in uh, a meal, you would just select what kind of meal it is. Um, breakfast, dinner, lunch, snack, drink, dessert. You can even put in supplement. And then you can type a description and then you can, if it's not coming up, so let's just say I say um, strawberries. You can see that it starts to pull up ingredients from their database. And then you can say I had uh, four large strawberries or Whatever, however you're measuring it, sliced, a cup, etc. Different sizes, how many grams? Depends how you're measuring your food. And then it starts to fill out caloric information for that meal. And I'll just delete this, or cancel that meal. So you can see here on this day, I had a big spike here. The yellow, the sort of olive, the green is, the darker green is like a normal range between about uh, 70 to 140. And anything over that or below that is a sort of yellowy green, which is not a good sign. It means like you're either going hypoglycemic or hyper. So you can see here, uh, this red dot here at the end of the day, that was me having a chocolate birthday cake, which caused a big spike in my blood sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Skipping forward to Christmas Eve, you can see a totally different looking chart. Uh, what happened here? I had dinner with some brown rice, lentils, so the rice caused a reaction. I also had some dessert, some cookies, some tarts. And you can see how long it takes your body to um, 
get your blood sugar back under control. You can see the this was six o'clock when I had dinner, and then this is kind of settling down at um, 10, 22 p.m. So that's a long time. So that's an indication that um, what you ate, your body is struggling to get your blood sugar under control. Your insulin is not really being effective. So that's a sign that maybe that's not a great thing for you to eat. Uh, you also have interesting little spikes like uh, here where I had some pineapple. The strawberries are highly unlikely to cause a spike like this. It only went up to 120, but it was a sharp, short spike. So my body's like, yeah, I can deal with pineapple. Totally different looking chart here. So, you know, I had some microwave popcorn at the end of the day that didn't do any great things to me. I had Twizzlers, Ferrero Rocher, <laughs> it sent me up to the stratosphere. <laughs> Uh, I had some yams for dinner, pierogies, so that was not great for me. Another day, just all over the place, having fun experimenting, had a burger and onion rings, and that kind of wreaked havoc on me, and then I had a bunch of candy and ice cream and some pomegranate, and then, yeah, blood sugar not looking good. <laughs> Another hilarious graph. What do we have here? There's some chocolates, uh, a whole wheat bun with dinner, and some ice cream and blackberries. So, total train wreck. <laughs> 28th. What's this spike? This spike is, uh, oh, I had a salad with quinoa. And you think quinoa is healthy for you. Well, look at what it did to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then this drop here is because uh, at this point in time, I exercised. I did strength training. And that sort of was a reset on my blood sugar. So that's something I've noticed is exercise is like hitting the reset button on my blood sugar. And I've also noticed that, for example, here... Uh, anytime I have breakfast, I seem to, following that, have a drop in blood sugar no matter what I eat. So I don't think that means that I'm necessarily going hypoglycemic. It's just like I wake up with my blood sugar at a certain level and then breakfast kind of resets it to a proper baseline for the day. On the 29th, what do we got here? I had some brown rice of a Mexican meal and that was not great for me. And then I had some ice cream after a while and that spiked me again. And then I did some running intervals and fixed my blood sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see like it gives you relative scores for things like this was hilarious. I had the this number six here. I had some carbonated water with a stevia uh, water flavoring. And I have since thrown this product out because as soon as I drank it, I felt like it was tasted sweet and it tasted too good to be true. Uh, that it was not zero calories and that it had sugar in it. And I was right because it caused this spike right here that's me drinking supposedly zero calorie stevia sweetener for water <laughs> so i threw that stuff out that was just a lie i won't name the product because i'll get in trouble but that was a good lesson learned with the cgm uh what happened here look at this train wreck uh i had some couscous like, wow, <laughs> shot up about 50 points. Uh, not so bad, staying between about 90 and 120-ish. So that was a pretty good day, New Year's Eve. Oh, I had a beer late at night. And of course,
course, I'm missing data, but I think that that spiked me. Uh, and I've experimented with things like gin, uh, whiskeys and stuff, and distilled alcohol doesn't seem to bother me, which is great. Uh, beer, definitely not great for me. This is like a liquid loaf of bread, anyway. What's here? Lentil shepherd's pie. So lots of potato. Spiked me decently. And then I did some yoga and that helped reset me. So not just weights or crazy running intervals, but even yoga helped reset my blood sugar. Another very wild day with swings. Um, went cross country skiing. And when you exercise, you have, sometimes you get an increase in your blood sugar because your muscles need the energy. But eventually it drops off. Uh, I ate a chocolate chip cookie in there too. <laughs> uh, right here, leftover lentil shepherd's pie again. Another giant spike. And then I did a run on a treadmill and everything came under control again. Uh, January 3rd, what's this? Wow, lunch, lunch I had yam and a whole bunch of vegetables and cheese and beef jerky. I thought, and some nuts and pistachios. I thought, let's see what yam does to me. Well, this is what yam did to me. <laughs> Just yam, you think that's supposed to be the healthy starch. Nope, not really. <laughs> Not for me. Again, here I had uh, dinner, super healthy dinner, and things were looking great. And then I had dessert, some ice cream, and caused a spike, but not a giant spike. So the dietitian explained like if you eat a whole bunch of protein, it can, and then wait a while, and then have a bunch of carbs, it can help keep your blood sugar a little bit in check and then I did some yoga again and got myself back under control and then today I've been very cautious all the way up until um, 8 20 where I I left corn frozen corn just boiled corn out of my dinner I had a taco salad with no no taco shell and I left the corn off to the side and I had it by itself at 820 just to see you know is it a culprit and not really just a minor little spike because of the corn so that's the kind of experiment that you run and you see how long it takes your body to recuperate from eating that thing Yeah, today I had ate very cautiously trying to keep my blood sugar in a tight range. So this was the lowest it was today was 86 and up to 112. So this is the kind of day that you want to aim for to have steady energy and and not have like chronically high insulin during the day, which could end up leading to insulin resistance and pre-diabetes and eventually type 2 diabetes and, and be damaging to your body. Uh, what else is in the app here? Uh, you can add notes so you can say, you know, I felt wonky after eating something. Um, you can add your exercise in here, fasting, meditation, sleeping just to track that too. You can add notes like I had a bad night's sleep after eating blah blah blah. And there's also this analytics tab where you can dive into things for each day of the last seven days or 14 days. See your uh, average macros and calorie intake and whatnot. It's pretty neat. Generally, a, a easy to use app. 
uh, and lots of great information. The only thing that's not great is the data extract, in my opinion, is really lacking what it exports. In case you eventually want to get rid of the app, I guess you could take some screenshots or something or make your own spreadsheet with notes. Just a quick post edit here, a couple things I forgot to show. Uh, there's a little icon here that's like little corners of a square up at the top right. You tap that and you get just the graph and a landscape view for a better view of things. And what you may run into is like say you eat something at like 11 p.m. and you're gonna go to bed about 12 15 or something you may be like it's not showing up I keep scanning and the data is not showing up all you got to do is um, push and hold in the bottom half of the screen and pull down and you see the spinning symbol do that a couple times and it will update the graph eventually to show the scans that you've made and then once you go past midnight, you gotta go, you gotta scroll to the next day and then scan again and refresh. And then stuff starts showing up. But at first you're kind of like confused what's going on, why it's not showing new data. And that's why you just gotta refresh it. One thing you may wonder about is what is the customer service of NutriSense like? Uh, and my experience was was very good you have customer service from two perspectives you have the dietitian that is assigned to to help you with the app and the sensor for the length of your subscription and you can interact with them as much as you want they will respond at least once a day uh, with suggestions of Things you might want to try eating, food timing, food combinations, different experiments basically to see what happens with your blood sugar. And that was a great experience. And then you have the side of the support team. And anytime I sent a question to the support team about billing or whatever it was, they were, you know, quick to respond and and give me the answers I was looking for. So from a customer service perspective, no complaints. Um, yeah, NutriSense was great. So hopefully you found that tour of the app useful and enlightening and found my own blood sugar data interesting and my learnings interesting. Uh, I'm gonna finish this video by answering the question that everyone probably has is, okay, it looks cool. How much money does it cost? <laughs> so start by saying you have to currently live in the US or Canada to use NutriSense. Uh, I'm sure they're gonna open that up to more countries in the future, but that's just how they've started off. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have a health spending account with your employer or coverage that would cover a device like this, fantastic. It's not money out of your pocket. Take advantage of your coverage. I don't have that luxury <laughs> with my current job. So I did pay for the subscription myself. There is a point where you're going through the checkout process where there is a little box that says coupon code. So of course, just Google and you can usually find coupon codes. And I did, I think I saved 50 bucks US off of a subscription with a code that I found. So I ended up paying $350 US for 28 days subscription. That's the minimum subscription. And the 28 days is because the package comes with two sensors and they last 14 days each. That's why it's not 30 days or 31 days. It's the length of time that the sensors supposedly uh, read things properly and don't run out of the battery that's in the sensor. So what I recommend to people, you know, if you have $350 or you can, you know, 
use your health benefits to get it? Absolutely. I think you can see from the, the demonstration that I did of the app, and the things that I've learned that it's, to me, it's been really incredible. I have definitely felt over the past year or two that my body is changing, that I'm becoming more sensitive to things, and now I have the data to, to explain it. Uh, it was definitely worth the $350 to me. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this whole series of videos about my uh, CGM usage to be valuable. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a like, uh, throw a comment down below, share it with people who may benefit from it as well, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.